What drove that 9% increase in net interest income that uh, really other banks are not being able to keep up with? Yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, it was a, a strong result again, and uh, it is driven by, by high income growth and, and also a good cost control. Uh, during the quarter, we have seen a high activity, continued high activity within uh, basically all core lines. And, um, and uh, mortgages continue to grow uh, steady in basically all four countries and uh, also lending to, uh, to small and mid-sized uh, enterprises increased uh, quite good. So uh, it has been a good momentum, more volumes, basically stable margins, and that has led to a, a good uh, improvement of, of net interest income. Frank, we're looking at your cost of income ratio, 48%. Good morning, it's man, is 48% from 57%. So you're doing the hard lifting on costs. Is there more to come? Are there more costs to take out of the business? And how did you achieve such a significant 10% reduction in your costs? Yeah, we have basically, uh, the, the, the answer, short answer to the question is, yes, there are more to come, and we are working hard to increase the efficiency in the company every day. We have three basically key priorities that we are, we are um, working hard to deliver on every day. The first one is to deliver great customer experiences. The second one is to drive income growth initiatives. And the third one is to, to optimize operational efficiency. And um, so it is about working with the income growth, with the customer experience, and then with the efficiency, cost efficiency in the company, basically challenging the lines that is not really um, you can say, supporting uh, our customers. What's going to be the size, Frank, of the share buyback program you're looking at? Uh, we, have not, uh, we have not concluded on that yet. Uh, we are planning to, to, uh, to, uh, to do buybacks uh, later this year um, after the, the restri restrictions of ECB has been lifted. Um, like the first step is to to uh, to follow the mandate uh, the uh, board has been given by by the AGM to pay out the dividend um, from 19 uh, the second part of that one uh, second installment and then the 20 dividend and then uh, we want to to, uh, to start our buyback uh, buyback um, um, later uh, the, the year probably in in, in Q4. Frank, you've still got 650 billion euros set aside for future losses. We're hearing from Standard Charter they're guiding much lower on impairments. We'll talk to the CFO in a moment. Why are you still retaining such substantial a buffer? And when can we expect you to unwind that and write back? Yeah, the credit quality uh, is strong within Nodair, uh, and we, we, we show uh, low realized net low losses uh, corresponding to uh, six basis points this quarter. Um, and then it's, it is correct that we have retained the buffer of 650 million euro. And the reason for that is we believe it's, it's, it's too early to, uh, to conclude on the uh, financial implications uh, on, of our customers um, because it's still we are, we, we do see the light of the, uh, at the end of the tunnel, but, but still uh, we, we have some way to go in, 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 in the Nordics as well as in the rest of the world. So uh, it is too early to conclude. We believe it's prudent to, to, to retain it, and then we follow it, of course, carefully the coming quarters. Frank, you mentioned in the past you're going to uh, organize yourself so you're not dependent on travel. Lufthansa numbers just broke. They see capacity about 40% of pre-crisis level. Uh, Madison and I mentioned HSBC cutting business travel. Are you going to be cutting business class travel? We have learned to, uh, we, we are a pan-Nordic uh, pan company. So basically, um, we have been, been working uh, in, in most you can say group functions nautically, and, and that has led to a, a lot of traveling. Um, and uh, sometimes you need a, a wake-up call to or something extraordinary thing ha needs to happen before you change your habits. And the last year we have, uh, for natural reasons, uh, not been traveling, and it has worked very well. So uh, we have taken the learnings, and, uh, and when we start to basically ask more people to come into the offices, and also uh, the new ways of, of working uh, post COVID-19, it will definitely be with much less traveling and it will be also um, uh, 
meeting uh, in a different way.